about a Spark uh, case that is relatively very mild and has mild crowding. Um, what you see here on the left are the photographs. It's a class one skeletal dental uh, malocclusion with mild anterior crowding, no more than four millimeter per arch. Um, what you do see in this mild shot on the top left is that there is some slightly increased gingival display on smiling. Um, and perhaps the patient has a slight vertical excess um, in the lower face height. However, if their chief concern is simply um, to have alignment, then I think this is a case where, you know, we would accept the gingival display on smiling. Uh, it, you know, in studies, it does show that it is considered to be a youthful smile. As long as that gingival um, display is symmetric, I feel it's quite acceptable for many patients. Um, and with time, we know that lips lengthen and um, grow vertically. So we know that it should get better with time on its own. So hence, we don't want to overthink in this case when it comes to vertical. You can see it's class one occlusion on both sides, midline's coincident, nice overjet, nice overbite. In fact, this is as ideal an occlusion we can get. If you look at the lower arch, there's mild crowding, possibly some clenching or wear facets there on the canines, and then some mild crowding here as well. So this is a spark uh, setup. And today I'm gonna show you what's happened in this case. So if we look at the very first case design, um, that spark set. Now, I, I must say this is not a technician issue. This is um, an issue that um, whoever prescribes can give very erroneous instructions that can make it really bad um, a setup. So let's look at what the very first design came back as. I mean, this is a slam dunk easy case. It's just mild alignment. You don't want to change anything in this uh, kid's smile. But what the first case came back with, if we have a look, is a lot of intrusion of upper incisor. Now that was probably done because there was some sort of um, uh, rationale here for the dentist to say where we might reduce gingival display and smiling. However, this is not a deep bite case, hence there is no need for intrusion like that. Um, of the upper incisors. In fact, you want to maintain the vertical heights where they are. Um, it's fairly symmetric in itself. If anything, you would just slightly intrude the posteriors um, and, and maintain the upper uh, one, three to two, three gingival heights that are near ideal. Now let's look at the lower arch as well. There was um, at the end based on the instructions the dentist probably thought this is a deep bite case now again it can be erroneous to believe this is a deep bite case because there's unusually long central incisors so we know you know na a normal width of a central uh, or oh, sorry length of a central incisor and we know they do kind of look longish and if they look this long you could get the impression that there is a deep overbite however it's, it's very, very mildly increased overbite. It's something that doesn't even need treatment. So no treatment is a very valid option for this case. In fact, if treatment's needed and you're going to do it with the liners, I would argue that there is no need for any attachment in this case. Perhaps the only attachments could be at the back for some retention of the aligner because there are minimal movements required, okay? Now, I, what point twos are, these are IPR planned by the dentist, and that may be appropriate in sometimes when there's more crowding in one arch than the other, and it's a class one case, it could be the fact that it's incisor torque issue or tooth width size issue. So here, possibly, it is a tooth width issue. We can see here that the mandibula excess is about 2.5 millimeter so there is a slight excess in the mandible hence ipr is appropriate for this case for anterior alignment um, and of course we'd have to just make sure we have a little bit of the correct torque as well at finish all right so then um, a revision was made by the dentist where um, we, I don't know what instructions were given, but it kind of started to go quite bad from here. So the instructions given were to expand 
the arch excessively. Now, while you're expanding, buckle root torque on upper posteriors is recommended to prevent the tipping of upper posterior teeth and consequent open bite. So this is excessive um, phased movement that is not biologically plausible in the upper arch. Hence, again, this is a bad setup. Let's go to the next one. And when we go to the next design, we're now looking at, again, we, we continue with our strategy of intruding these incisors when, again, there's little need for that. And now we're constricting the lower arch somewhat. And again, this doesn't make sense. So let's go to the next plan that was done. I mean, this is getting beyond um, four revisions for the mildest case there. So again, the, the biggest issue here is that the dentist believes that they can reduce gingival display, which is pretty symmetric and quite normal in um, a growing teen, especially if he has a slight vertical tendency, that they can reduce it somewhat by intruding. And they're convinced that this is a deep bite case. So it goes back to diagnosis. It goes back to incorrect diagnosis and hence incorrect planning and incorrect biologic rationale of trying to reduce gingival display in upper incisors by intruding them in a growing teen uh, with slight vertical issues. So, you know, you have to really balance everything. So what my suggestion would be to do minimal expansion of the arches, minimal attachments needed. If anything, we would only do attachments possibly on the one, two, and two, two, the loose lateral incisors, because they probably just need a bit of tipping and alignment and some attachments on, you know, one of the premolars in each quadrant for retention. And I would use my IPR. This is correct IPR here. And I would basically simply align this case with giving a tiny bit of incisor torque and align the upper arch, the D rotations and a bit of torque. So we want to finish at an inter incisal angle of about 130 degrees. We want to maintain the class one. We want to maintain the overbite. We want to maintain the overjet and we want to maintain the midlines. Hence, Minimal need for attachments, minimal need for vertical changes, minimal need for transverse changes, and minimal need for, and literally no need for AP changes. This is how simple this plan can be. And yes, always remember, no treatment is a very, very valid treatment option for this case. So thank you for watching, guys. I hope you learned how something so simple can go so haywire um, when we, um, diagnose incorrectly when we uh, plan for incorrect tooth movements and when uh, we possibly overthink a simple case like this. Thank you guys.